Hello and welcome to this vlog for the Survivor Diaries. Um, this vlog is intended just as a review of the channel and the purpose of the Survivor Diaries and where we're going with it. It's obviously behind the scenes. Uh, I have, I'm feeling a lot of pressure to make a vlog because we haven't made one for um, several weeks so I'm quite a comical story there which I will share. Um, the purpose of the vlogs is behind the scenes so behind the scenes we have had um, several recording failures so I've recorded this particular review episode I think this is the fourth or fifth time now um, the first time the memory card appeared to fail so I've got a new memory card a week later recorded it again and then it's not the memory card it's clearly the recording device so tried to record it on iPad um, and then the sound quality was so bad that I'm now recording it again so I'm probably going to speed through this vlog um, with the intention of making it as quick as possible and just covering the basic points, which is, first of all, we're still here. We're just having several um, bits of recording failure. Um, as well as that, I, both, both me and the co-producer of the Survivor Diaries work full time. We're both extremely busy with work and so we're sort of snatching times for planning, editing, recording, filming um, around two full time jobs. Also, you know, it's important to spend time with family and friends. In my case particularly, I'm feeling at the moment, I think this is why I'm doing a review vlog, is because November's coming around, this time last year I was quite ill and there's lots of things reminiscent of that time. So the leaves changing, the nights drawing in, um, all of these sort of add up to just me, just me taking stock of things, I think, just sort of like looking back over the last year and how things have been. And I suppose the biggest change has been with the Survivor Diaries, the starting of the channel. The intention here is to help litigants in person and that's that remains one of the, um, the main aims of the channel. So the Survivor Diaries content, the legal content, is always going to be available on YouTube and free um, and that's going to go through different things and if there are changes to the law hopefully they will also show and I'll be able to cover those as well. So we've got quite a lot of different things that we want to cover. Uh, general themes, general issues about domestic abuse um, also, we want to keep continuing to cover those issues. And th one of the main messages of the channel continues to be about domestic abuse and how it continues as a, a type of post-separation control. Sometimes it's the only way that the abuse can continue is through the child arrangements because it's the only contact that's taking place. And it can take many very subtle forms. And one of the, the forms that I have experienced is like a, a threat to reveal and an intention for that to be um, very to try to control me in some way so to, to a threat to reveal personal information that I've shared so far in this channel um, that had a knock-on effect in things like reporting to police at the time um, the, one of the aims of the channel is to show how that is a type of um, abusive and controlling behaviour it's the sexual controller in Pat Craven's Dominator um, we are going to have a whole episode about that and about that time and about how that kind of it's, it includes revenge porn. A lot of times people in these relationships are doing things that they don't necessarily feel completely comfortable with and then that is then being used against them when they separate and that's yet another form of control that carries on through the child arrangements. So I've had my own experience with that over the last year. I've also had my own experience with court proceedings, family court proceedings again, so as a court user. And it doesn't really matter um, that I'm a family lawyer. I know I've said this before. The experience as a court user is, is a message that I continue to want to get across through the Survivor Diaries um, to people who haven't experienced it from that perspective. So legal professionals, if they haven't experienced what it's like to be trying to co-parent with an abuser um, continuing after separation and the, the really subtle ways that the abusive personality is constantly constantly trying to undermine the non-abusive personality um, and it's not <clears throat> I'll just add here it's not that I'm avoiding talking about he she um, I have noticed comments underneath the um, the videos on the YouTube channel and all I will say at this time the survivor diaries or this channel will continue to show a description of the abusive personality which relates to the patriarchal society so therefore this is going to follow Pat Craven's model of the dominator 
and domestic abuse is a gender-based issue and it will continue to refer to he and she and if that causes problems people are I, I respect that people have different opinions um, if it causes problems and people don't have to subscribe or watch. So I've been talking about reviewing the channel um, and where it's going. Um, I've had a lot of very good feedback from people about how the channel is helping them. Um, I can, I, in the last few months I've spoken to so many people, it's just reinforcing what I set out to do, which is to to, to raise awareness about the practice direction and how domestic abuse one can continue through the child arrangements and secondly what the courts can do if they are following the correct practice direction which sets out what the court should do when domestic abuse has been alleged in private children law proceedings so that's usually between the parents. Um, in myself I have been feeling so much better since this time last year um, a lot combined with sort of medication and that's helped me to realise how much stress, again realising this, how much stress dealing with the abusive personality in a co-parenting sense can put on the non-abusive parents and therefore that affects their parenting. So one of the things that I've now wanted, or tried to record four or five times is just affirming the purpose of the Survivor Diaries and what we are doing with it. Um, also in this um, episode, I also, sorry, vlog, I also wanted to cover as well as talking about the episode that is will be upcoming about the sexual controller and how I um, became involved with certain areas. Because I've been more public about that this year um, and I think it's important to do so is to show it as a form of continuing coercive and controlling behaviour after separation which is the threat to reveal things and this is what I've discussed in previous episodes and vlogs. Um, because of my openness about this, um, that's attracted some media interest. So one of the things that I wanted to cl clarify on the vlog is that the way that I would be wanting to focus in dealings with media is promoting an awareness and an understanding about these more subtle forms of domestic abuse and how they continue post-separation, especially through the child arrangements. Um, thank you for, to people for sharing the channel. Um, Thank you. I know that the, the numbers are increasing, People, are, more people are commenting. You can get in touch with us at survivordiaries.uk at gmail.com, I think that's right. Um, there's also a Facebook group. Um, if you are able to support the channel, clearly we need a new camera, um, then I think Paul is going to put some links to uh, Patreon um, and, and other ways that you can donate if you can help us with that. Um, other things that I wanted to look at in this review, um, I'm very clear that from speaking to people that it continues, domestic abuse continues to the child arrangements, that's just been reaffirmed for me in the making of this channel so far. The courts do have a mechanism, Practice Direction 12J, that can deal with abuse. It can also deal with allegations of parental alienation if you need it to because if somebody's saying no I'm not abusive I'm being alienated then take it to fact finding follow the practice direction take it to fact finding it's the same advice take it to the fact finding sort out what's going on and then you stop these cases coming back and coming back and coming back I see as a problem that some courts even with allegations of serious domestic abuse are trying whatever they can to squeeze some form of contact and it's there in the CAFCAS officers and it's there in the court and the court attitude of what can we do if we can persuade you that this contact is safe then you know we, we must go ahead and I appreciate that that has to be balanced with the fact that a parent is potentially losing direct contact with their children however I think as a safeguarding issue that is something that needs to be examined and it needs to be looked at um, otherwise you get the cases returning and returning and you've had we've had Sir Andrew McFarlane talking about um, how dealing with the volume of private family law cases in this year um, it's like running up a down escalator and my personal and professional opinion is that the courts need to deal with domestic abuse properly and then it will stop those cases returning to court and returning to court when contact has been squeezed through no matter what and then because there's some contact happening, we don't look at the issues of domestic abuse, we don't fact find. And then, lo and behold, it leaves the court, we've got final orders, and then it comes back to court again because 
the domestic abuse carries on through the child arrangements. I, I know I'm stressing this point, but I think it's also too important to stress that point and to review at this point and say that that is what we need people to understand. People need to use the mechanism that can work, which is the practice direction. Um, just in support of that, there is a working group in private family law. They, have, they are doing the review of the family justice system, in particular they're looking at the CAP arrangements, well, the child arrangements programme, um, and they're, they're reviewing that. So in the previous episodes where we've covered child arrangements proceedings with and without domestic abuse, that's following the steps through the current child arrangements or CAP programme. So what they have said in their review this year about the practice direction, although their focus is not just, well actually it's outside of their focus in that particular re review, um, which was published in June this year, it actually says that, um, and I'm hoping we can flash up paragraph 90, where it says, review of the operation of practice direction 12J is out with the specific remit of the private law working group's terms of reference. And then, importantly, However, we consider it timely to emphasise that the integrated provisions of Practice Direction 12J forcibly remind the Court of the seriousness with which it needs to consider domestic abuse in its wider sense whenever it is alleged. And I would say that that's the working group correctly identifying that the Practice Direction must be robustly enforced by the Court if there are allegations of domestic abuse, and in its widest sense, so these more subtle forms of coercive and post-separation control. And it's important that if you are going into child arrangements proceedings that you familiarise yourself with this Practice Direction. We're going to put a link to it below. Watch some of the other videos. Look at how the Court should be examining the issue of domestic abuse allegations and what you need the court and CAFCAS to do. On the topic of um, making yourself familiar with the practice direction, see what local support you have available, um, independent domestic abuse support, um, use your GP support etc. These are things that we do emphasise in the videos. Seeking support from other services. There are some excellent sources of information, rights of women, we quite often flag up those, they are based in London and they offer a telephone service and you can obtain legal advice there. Domestic abuse services, local domestic abuse services, so for example uh, in North Yorkshire, although it covers the whole of Yorkshire, we've got independent domestic abuse services or IDAS. IDAS have just created a website, we're putting a link to that below as well. That's very very clear and helpful website that takes people as a litigant in person through the different steps of different family law proceedings so child arrangements um, non molestation orders the things that people need to do to assist themselves or to assist somebody if you're concerned if you're watching this video concerned about somebody else things that can help them to get out of the situation that they're in because parenting is hard enough without also having to deal with the abusive co-parent. Okay, so there's been a few squeaks from this one. Um, typical vlog style, we have got a new addition to the family here. This is Duke. Um, Duke is the second idea after an emotional support duck. So Duke is a French bulldog, French bulldog and Chihuahua cross. Um, he has been with us for about four weeks and he has come from a friend of mine who has a pup dog cafe in Malton in Yorkshire um, and so we're quite often down there with his sister who is also for sale and if you can't afford um, or if you don't if it's not practical for you to have a dog um, you can also join her for pop-up cuddles there. A bit random that um, but I am um, also show behind the scenes other things that we've been a little bit busy with, obviously acquiring new additions to the family. And as I said, it's time of year where I'm quite reflective, so I'm, sp I'm also wanting to spend time with family and friends when I am not um, necessarily at work. Okay, so I hope that that's been useful. The purpose of this was just to show you that we're still here after three or four recording fails, and which is just typical, and to just to review the Survive Diaries, where we're going and the shape of the survivor diaries, the purpose of the survivor diaries and just affirming that if you do know people who are experiencing difficulties with the child arrangements and domestic abuse has been an issue please continue to direct them to the survivor diaries channel to the Facebook group um, and people can email us as I've mentioned before 
Okay, I think I hope that's been helpful and um, just to tell you that we're, we're still here. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode and or vlog. Thank you for watching and bye.